So the tumbled Nova, this is our first sort of trip into looking at large military vehicles, land-based vehicles. So this is the heavy tank. It's a really, really big tank. It's bigger than many tanks I think exist right now. This is like a 12 meters long, five meters tall, nine meters wide tank. So this is pretty big. This allows the player to stand upright in the tank. He won't have to, to crouch or to have some weird stance like in the rover or some other vehicles. So this is uh, built by Tumbrel, which is a relatively new company in terms of uh, the sort of art style that we've been working with. Uh, and this is like, this is the large uh, battle tank basically. So this is like the size of a small British house. Tumbrel uh, apparently has been making tanks, uh, has been making well, military hardware a long time ago. We've introduced it with a cyclone, and at the time I think we've teased that it did tanks in the past. And this is, well, one of their best designs. This is a super heavy tank. It's really well armed, really well protected as well. And yeah, it's obviously good against other ground vehicles, but also made to be able to defend itself against spaceships if needed. We got three different weapons on the Nova tank. We got a big ballistic cannon at the front, like most tanks, where basically you can't fire. It's made for ground vehicles because it will be probably too slow to track spaceships and stuff like this. We got two laser repeaters, which is basically the same loadout that the Lander Rover or most turrets or stuff like this. And then we got a new kind of missiles that is on the tank and that is made to defend itself against the, shi the ships. It has also some countermeasures, but this is more like, if you get a missile alert from a, from a spaceship, you can defend yourself against this. But yeah, this is just basic defense. And it's sort of a modular, you know, modular construction. So we're gonna be able to swap out the main turret for different abilities. The modularity mainly is in just the two sections. So you've got the main turret and then the body. Um, so the body is a sort of the main rolling chassis and we can, we can swap that out. You know, maybe that you have two huge rail guns, maybe you've got anti-aircraft, maybe it's like a, you know, just a whole salvo of missiles. Um, I guess that's to be, that's to be sort of worked on and figured out as part of the whole gameplay experience. In, and in terms of construction, um, you know, it's quite, it, it, you know, there are, there are similarities with the buggy, you know, with the, um, with the cyclone. You know, the Cyclone was the first of the tumbrel vehicles, and that one had a very sort of signature um, f sort of exoskeleton almost, like you had, a, you had a framework that was very visible that ran around, and then everything was sort of bolted onto it. Obviously with a tank, you, you want it to be heavy, you want it to feel robust, um, so that frame isn't visible from the exterior, but it is from the interior, so, you, there are, so a lot of the sort of line work and uh, design theory is more visible on, on the interior. So again, it's got that sort of um, almost modular feeling. So like if you wanted to repair it, you could just sort of, you could just swap parts out and bolt them back in. The exterior is a bit special. We wanted to show that, well, this is an heavy tank, so it have a big armor plate. The turret is separated from the body, so the gunner is not going inside the turret, like in some tanks that we, we know actually. The, the gunner might be close to the turret. This is not the case here. The gunner is in a separate room. This, that is under the turret, but not linked to the turret. Uh, at the front, there's a driver on a gunner, or well, that works on other systems. There is enough space inside to take care of the components. Like if a component start to overheat or whatever, you can repair it or change it while you're inside the tank. There is um, a next, external door uh, that is at the rear. You got a mini ramp and basically a door. This is a relatively easy entry point. This is not like tanks where you have to go from the top or this kind of stuff. On the side of the tank, there's also side skirts, protection side skirts that will be linked to suspension. So if you move, the side skirt obviously won't stay at the same position. It will move, it will rise up with the, with the suspension of the tracks. We haven't gone wild with this. Um, it's more of a natural progression. Tumble isn't a wild manufacturer, uh, so we've sort of tried to keep it in fiction. And so, you know, you look at it, it you know, it's, 
uh, it is pretty solid, but it's not, you know, it's not full of trinkets. It's, you know, it hasn't got uh, reactive armor plastered all over the sides. This thing has a shield, so we don't, you know, we don't need to worry about that. Uh, you know, it has got, obviously, uh, in terms of its construction, it looks solid, weighty, like it could take a hit even if your shield goes down. But beyond that, it, you know, it's relatively straight, you know, it's relatively straightforward, I guess, you know. Um, it's got um, countermeasures, you know, it's got some um, anti-personnel guns on it. It's got this main, it's got its main barrel, which I think is an S4. Um, and then um, some, uh, like a salvo of missiles, basically for aircraft, etc. And that's, and that's pretty much it. I mean, I think that's, that's going to give you a good, you know, a good sh shot at staying alive. And if there's a few of you in these things, then, you know, it should be pretty imposing. You know, I'm sort of looking forward to the day when players are playing the game and you're on one of the moons or one of the planets and you're sort of looking at the horizon and then this whole battalion sort of starts creeping over. I think that's going to be, you know, that's kind of like a classic World War II moment, isn't it? You know, sort of, uh, sort of Sahara-based um, kind of thing. I mean, I mean, it's going to happen in all sorts of worlds, isn't it? You know, different, you know, you're going to have cold moons, you're going to have Sahara, sandy deserts, you're going to, I guess, you know, ultimately in the future we're going to have foliage and all that side of things. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be, it's going to be, um, it's going to be pretty cool. Every kind of player wants a tank at some point because, well, this, this is a must have. Uh, in, in a game, if you can't make a tank, obviously you need to make a point, a, a tank at some point. Uh, and many players want a tank, but I think many developers wanted a tank as well. So we're really happy and really excited about working on a tank uh, because yeah, this, this is not like a simple rover or a cyclone or a bike or whatever this is where well, you've got a big tank, big protection, big guns. So, so uh, and hopefully, hopefully we will get big explosions from that as well. <laughs> Inspiration wise, um, obviously we've, you know, we're pulling from uh, the tumbrel work that we did on the cyclone and continuing to push on that. I mean, I've said it again, it, for me, it's always the time, you know, it's the timelines that are tricky. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that you, that you want to cover and you want to try and figure out. You don't necessarily have all the time. So um, that's why I sort of see this as our sort of you know, entry into this side of things and we'll, and we'll continue pushing it, we'll continue pushing materials and sort of working on that tumble manufacturer influence. Um, and, you know, in terms of real world reference, uh, that's the beauty of the internet, right? In terms of, you know, there's no shortage of information on tanks, APCs, futuristic, um, old school stuff. And it's just sort of picking, picking what works best for Star Citizen in terms of uh, our influences and then sort of okay well that, that's cool but how do we how do we advance that how do we move it forward how do we how do we make this tank look like it's not built in five years time people still want it you know people everybody knows what a tank should look like you know so it's kind of you know you're always you know always treading that line of sort of um, providing what people want to see in terms of traditional sense and then I think you know if, if we want to do the wilder stuff, that's when we, we, you know, we start using other manufacturers. That's, you know, that's when we can really sort of start pushing out of the bounds of what people expect a tank to be. Uh, I, I really like tanks, so uh, I'm really happy to be on the first tank of the game. Uh, so this is a super heavy tank. I think if we make other tanks later on, it will probably be smaller after that and probably closer to what we have where you don't really have a real interior to the tank you get from the top, you get inside and you're on your seat. Whereas this one is a really big tank, you get inside, you walk inside, you can change the components, you can go see if the other crew member is fine or just open the door on fire through the door, this kind of stuff. So yeah, this is not your usual kind of tank in games and this is not your usual kind of tank that you could see in real life as well unless you, you are talking about some crazy prototypes that never came out or whatever. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is really cool. And, um, the, name, the name is nice as well, uh, Tumbril Nova. So I, I think we got some really interesting 
lore about the tank as well. We get some proper ground vehicles on that. The tank is coming this soon into the game. Uh, this would be really, really nice for every kind of situation, as I said. Like, if you want to attack a base, or if you want to, to do a surprise to some players, or defend yourself against ships, this will be really nice. Like, there's every kind of situation that has be, been planned outside, obviously, of falling from space or going into the water or this kind of stuff.